Hi, this is your host Sabin Bharti, and welcome to another episode of TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us Brian Singer, Chief Product Officer at Noble Nine. Uh, tell me a bit about Noble Nine. What do you guys do? So Noble Nine's been around a little over a year, and we help companies solve their reliability challenges. Uh, as organizations have moved more and more services to the cloud um, and have delivered more of their software online, uh, they've started to struggle with how customers are able to use those services and within individual user journeys, making sure that they're reliable uh, up, to a certain, uh, up to a certain level. And so what we've done is we've taken some of the practices that, uh, that have come out of some of the leading companies like Google, and we've turned that into a reliability platform that enables organizations to establish what we call service level objectives for key user journeys and key services, and then measure those over time so that they can improve uh, service delivery. Can you also talk about the areas or space that Noble Nine operates in? What kind of industries, what kind of markets do you serve? Yeah, so any organization that has a direct linkage between the reliability of their services or uptime and revenue or customer satisfaction, which it, it turns out is becoming more and more companies as, as uh, you know, with the pandemic, every, you know, everything has moved online. Um, they have a particular interest in reliability. And the key challenge that they find is you can always become more and more reliable, but you end up spending a lot of resources to do that. So going from, for example, three nines uptime to four nines uptime is an order of magnitude more expensive. Um, it may be worth it in, circum in certain si situations, but it might not be worth it for every service that, that you're delivering. And so breaking those out is something that, that you know, many of these organizations, whether it's telecom or financial services uh, or like B2B SaaS companies that uh, a lot of these other companies are building on top of are, are very interested in right now. So does it matter where uh, your customers are running their workload? Is it cloud native? They can do anything on data center, their own servers? It doesn't really matter um, from a reliability standpoint and both models are, are valid. Uh, obviously, we see a lot of hybrid. Um, many companies run some workloads on-prem, maybe if they're in a regulated industry, and some on cloud, and they have different needs when it comes to reliability, depending on what the workload is. Um, you know, they you know, take financial services, they might be running sort of end-of-night batch processing, um, auditing, uh, that might be running on-prem. Um, the latency doesn't really matter for that, but they need those batch processes to finish in a certain amount of time, right? Whereas they're also delivering maybe an online banking service to customers, and those customers, uh, consumers might be really finicky about latency. So then in that situation, they really care about latency, but then they can take care of some of the batch processing uh, later on. Um, so, you know, that, that's one good example uh, of hybrid, but we see it across many industries. And, uh, you know, even in sort of B2B SaaS, it's surprising how many things are still running on-prem um, while, yes, a lot of the workloads have shifted to cloud. Also, can you talk about how is the shift towards cloud native? I mean, of course, when we say cloud native, it's a mix. We, we talk we talk about multi-cloud, not nobody is running only on public cloud. They have mix up. But how has this pandemic and the race uh, towards cloud or cloud native impacted your industry or whatever Noble Nine is doing, how it kind of even made you to accelerate how you are serving your customers. Yeah, so if you think about the classic model of, of serving uh, uh, an application off of VM, you might have two or three tiers, like a web tier and an app tier and a database, uh, all talking to each other. And so, you know, if you're gonna go instrument those points, classic monitoring approaches work reasonably well for that because you're looking at maybe the CPU usage on a single virtual machine. And if that's spiking up, you kind of know that there's an issue there. What Cloud Native has done is it's decoupled the actual service from the underlying hardware and greatly increased the number of services that are out there. So if an organization before was maybe looking at the order of tens or twenties of services, now we go into a typical organization and they have thousands of services that, you know, maybe they have a, a three or 4,000 person engineering team that that team's probably supporting a thousand plus services. Um, and when you think about the dependencies that you create at the networking layer between those services, 
reliability becomes much more challenging because it's not just a question of is my service operating reliably in the context of maybe one dependency or two dependencies. It's it's you might have a dozen different teams depending on you, um, and so the framework around service level objectives gives companies a very good model for understanding both the dependencies, you know, whether they're internal or external customers that are relying on the service, but also for managing uh, all of the things that go into reliability, you know, releases, um, you know, the actual amount of hardware that you're throwing at something, things like what your DR strategy is. Uh, so you can get to the right level of reliability. It's not, you know, four or five nines for every service. For many services, uh, you know, three nines reliable, if you're looking at latency, for example, is probably enough. But then if that service is relying on a bunch of other services to deliver its experience, those other services need to have increasing levels of reliability. So that shift to cloud native has really brought with it some of these new challenges that, you know, maybe inside of more of the hyperscale type uh, organizations like Google and, and Facebook, they've they faced these over the last 10 years. Now, organizations that are adopting cloud native are starting to hit the same challenges. You also recently announced the the beta of, or early access to your you know service level objective platform. Tell me a bit about what is this platform all about? There's a few challenges that come with establishing service level objectives. There's the technical challenges of typically the data you want to use is living in a bunch of different systems. Some of it might be in your monitoring system, uh, but it also is going to you know live in traditional databases uh, and logs, for example. And so bringing that all into one view of reliability is one of the key challenges that we're solving. So being able to go out and grab that data and normalize it and process it and give you an understanding of, you know, what, what are the error rates across these different sources and uh, how does that track related to the goals that you're setting for reliability. Um, so that's one thing. And then the other piece that is challenging is the cultural aspects of implementing a reliability program. So many organizations are going out and hiring site reliability engineers um, because that's the the new thing that's going to solve reliability challenges. Um, and and we're, we're big believers in the principles behind site reliability engineering. But what SREs really uh, deliver is a cultural shift and a, and a new, new way of thinking about reliability within the organization. And our platform is helping drive that shift because it's bringing those concepts straight to developers um, as part of their workflow. So if you think of from a cloud native standpoint, uh, you're, you're, it's, you know, you're creating a service definition for your service that is going to tell uh, something like Kubernetes how to run that service. We're creating a sort of reliability definition uh, in terms of defining those SLOs. And that's something that gets checked in alongside uh, a service level definition. So anyone that wants to come in and, and look at your service, you use your service, understands, well, what are the actual re reliability goals that you're trying to hit? Since it's in beta, so what kind of spe specific feedback you're looking at during beta? And uh, when do you plan to go uh, you know, public or when do you plan to op make it generally available? We've been running a closed beta for about six months now with some early adopters. And we've gotten fantastic feedback from them that's helped us to adjust and improve the platform that we're bringing now to open beta. And the open beta period for us is just a time to actually focus on improving the reliability of our own service. So one of the things that uh, SREs understand, the only way to get to better levels of reliability is to actually have outages, to actually have people using your software and to run into issues and then build playbooks and improve your SLOs over time so that you can deliver uh, a reliable service. So for us, that open beta period is all about improving the reliability of what we have now so that when we go into GA with some of these large customers, uh, they can they can rely on that. One of our SREs, uh, who's, who's fairly well known in the industry, uh, Alex Sudalga, likes to say that your reliability platform probably has to be one of the most reliable uh, parts of your stack. And, and we believe that. You also announced a partnership with Lifestep. Tell us a bit about what does it entail. Lightstep is an organization that has brought uh, incredible observability tools that help organizations that are cloud native or, or, or traditional get a lot of visibility into what's actually happening uh, under under the covers of their stack using distributed tracing and whatnot. 
Um, and one of the things that you can use that data for is to build very effective service level objectives because you're able to trace uh, something that's happening across multiple services. Um, so a great SLO service level objective, if you if you if you um, are looking at the state of the art, is to try to trace a whole user journey and understand what the expectation is from a customer for that user journey. How fast should it be able to happen? How does it happen to completeness? Um, and that can be hard to understand using traditional monitoring methods. Uh, since Lightstep is using distributed tracing, it actually gathers that data that you need to understand the user, the, the entire user journey uh, from start to finish and, and makes it accessible. And what we're doing is we're bringing that data into our platform. So now you can set goals and objectives and roll that out to a broader organization to understand how that reliability of that journey and, and multiple journeys are, are tracking over time. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for taking time out and talk about uh, this partnership, talk about the platform and uh, the problem area, the problem space that you are helping customer uh, in and uh, help them address their challenges. And I look forward to talk to you again once, once again. Thank you. Yeah, look forward to speaking in the future. Thanks so much for having me on.